Hi, it's Miles here at Fabricana. If you're like me, you fi might find yourself at this time of year, kind of early in the season, January, February, thinking about how to make your clothes last a little bit longer and finally getting to that darning you've been meaning to do. So we're gonna show you a few techniques today. Uh, we've taken this lovely um, kind of, it might be silk actually, this vintage tie that had a really bad uh, dog uh, chew hole in it and we've repaired it. Um, as well, we're looking at a wool fabric um, that might be a little bit moth-eaten or maybe you've caught it on um, something sharp. We're going to show you how to make this little beautiful um, leather patch with a beautiful blanket stitch. As well, um, I'm looking at things that I've seen on Pinterest and I've tried it myself to do this beautiful little embroidered leaf to cover a moth hole. So I just want to talk about some of the materials that we've used today to um, darn our tie. We've just used some regular sewing thread in a matching color with a hand sewing needle. Um, for the little heart shaped patch, I've used some faux uh, leather fabric, um, really easy to use, nice and soft, not as heavy as leather. And I've used a top stitching thread for the actual stitching. I used some chalk to create my little leaf shape for my little embroidery. Um, and for the embroidery, we used a yarn darner a needle with quite a sharp point but a very large eye to run the yarn through. Of course we did use some just regular knitting yarn to create our leaf. So before we get started I just want to remind you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. For our first bit of darning today we have this beautiful vintage tie. It's a knit tie, stretchy. Um, it's this beautiful olive color so I have taken my yarn darner and I've threaded it with a similar color. We're going to try and save the tie. It's got a nice big hole in it on the side. What I need to do is go put my needle in from the inside. Now I have to be very careful not to catch the underside of the tie. So I'm going to go over the hole and I'm going to stitch into just like a couple of millimeters from left to right. I'm a lefty, so I'm going left to right. If you're a righty, you'll be going right to left. I'm not gonna pull that really tight yet. I'm just gonna leave that nice and flat. Now I'm gonna go back to the other side of the hole towards me. I'm just gonna go right in where I came out and then just go over a couple more millimeters. This is very similar to the process you would use for um, sewing knitted pieces together. And then we go back over our hole to the other side, kind of right where I came out. I'm going back in a couple more millimeters. I'm going to pull that up again, not pulling it super tight, just keeping my work nice and flat. I'm going to go back in on the other side of the hole. Okay. At this point I am going to pull up some of my stitches. But I still want to be able to see where I came out on the other side. I'm just going to use my needle to create some tension to pull those stitches closed. Hopefully you can see what's happened there, is those stitches have kind of closed over the hole. So we're just doing our last stitch. I'm going to pull it nice and tight. And now that the hole is covered, I'm actually going to turn my work around a little bit. I'm going to put the needle through all those stitches to hide the tail of my thread. Then I can simply trim my thread nice and close. So we've finished our hole here. We might want to press it out a little bit so it's not quite so obvious, but hopefully we've given our tie a little bit more life and we can continue to wear it. So 
We don't have a garment to fix, but we have cut a little hole in this wool. You might have found that some bugs have eaten something, maybe your pets attacked some of your clothing and you got it caught on something sharp. So we definitely want to be able to reuse our, um, our garment. So we're going to do a little decorative patch. Um, consider maybe your elbows have worn out and you want to do maybe an elbow patch, but just for the purposes of today, we're going to cut out a little faux leather patch uh, to cover that hole. I'm just going to see if I can freehand it here, making a cute little heart shape. So we've cut out our little heart patch, um, just freehand. I've pinned it in place over the hole. I've threaded um, a hand sewing needle, it's sharp needle so I can get through the leather patch and I've threaded it with top stitch thread. Um, it's a little bit stronger. You could maybe use a couple of strands of embroidery floss or do what I'm doing with, um, with the top stitching thread. So the thing we need to do first is come up behind our work right at the edge of our patch. It doesn't really matter where you start. We're just gonna come up right on the edge of that patch. And I'm going to make sure that my thread is always kind of away from me because we're going to kind of be creating a loop for the blanket stitch that we're doing. So I'm going to actually like go a stitch length over into my patch and then up at the edge of the patch. Again, kind of looping my thread around and that creates that little blanket stitch. It catches the loop and makes it lay flat. So for our next stitch, we go back into our patch. The needle goes in, it comes up on the edge of our patch. The fabric is getting looped around. So our needle went through the loop of thread so that our stitch grabs it and creates that little blanket stitch. We're going to continue a couple more stitches for you to see. We're going to try and keep the stitches as even as possible. I don't claim to be an expert hand sewer. I try to avoid it as much as I can. But hopefully you'll get the idea. After a few stitches, you'll start to see, I'm just going to remove my pin because it's kind of getting in the way, the effect of the blanket stitch this beautiful little decorative stitch. You could use a contrast thread like we're doing. You can try and coordinate it to the patch, coordinate it to the fabric. Of course, our fabric is a little pink stripe, but it would have been super cute to use pink thread. So I'm just gonna continue doing this and then I will meet you for the last couple of stitches. So we're coming up on our last few stitches, so I thought we'd kind of catch up here. I'm just doing the exact same stitch I did before. I'm just going to show you how to bring your work back through because we're going right back into that first stitch that we did. And that will continue our stitch. Then I'm actually just going to go right back in where I did my first stitch just so that everything is continuous turn my work over. I tied a double knot in my stitching and I'm trimming close to where I, my knot. You can look our beautiful little heart shaped patch with a beautiful blanket stitch and our garment is as good as new. If you're like me you might find that moths have gotten into your wool garments. Got a little hole here. We're just going to patch that actually more in a decorative way again. Um, I'm going to draw a little leaf shape around the hole. Now, I got this off Pinterest. I don't know if you're like me, but Pinterest loves showing me darning videos and I find them fascinating. I watch every single one. So I hope you can see here this little nice little leaf that I've drawn and a little stem. I'm going to, I've threaded my yarn darner. It has a fairly sharp point with some pink yarn to coordinate with my fabric. I'm gonna come up through the center of the leaf. 
I haven't tied a knot in the yarn. I'm just going to leave a bit of a tail on the underside. Then I go to the top and I'm going to go in right at the point of my leaf and I'm going to come out to the right of my leaf, right on the edge of my chalk line. Then I go back to the top and I'm going left to right. You might want to go right to left, but just make sure you're being consistent. And I stitch under that thread, that yarn. So I've gone from left to right at the top. Now I'm going to go kind of parallel to my stitch on the right hand side. And then I'm going to bring my stitch all the way to the right side below where I stitched previously. and flat. Then I go back to the top, stitching under where I went in before. I'm going left to right through the back of the work. You can kind of see this little overlapping pattern that's going to happen. So then I, I'm going to cross over again. I'm going to stitch on the left hand side below my previous stitching all the way across the back of my leaf. See, I've made quite a bit of my leaf now. And I'm going to be covering the hole with lots of yarn, so there's no chance that I'm going to see that hole. And I'm just putting in the last stitch here, right at the bottom, left to right. And then I'm going to just put in a couple of stitches to create a little stem. I'm going to go back in where that went in before, kind of go back. This is the back stitch, so we'll create a little line for our stem. We're going to go right back in where that stitch came out. Then on the back, I'm actually going to kind of, with the tip of the needle, splice through the yarn right through it. I'm going to pull the needle through. That will hold the yarn in place. I'll trim close to that. There we have our beautiful little leaf design. Now a little hint, word to the wise, if you've done a little patch like this to cover a hole, you might want to do a couple of more leaves or maybe do something that mirrors on the other side of the garment so it looks more intentional. But I really love this little design and I think it would be a really cute little patch. Thank you all for joining us today. I hope you've learned some little tricks to make your clothes last a little bit longer. I know we're always trying to be a little more eco, environmentally friendly. Um, if we can make our clothes last longer to keep them out of landfill, that would be great. So thank you again for joining us today. Um, if you enjoy this content, make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel.